Hey everybody, it's Peter. It's Thursday, and again, that means it's time for the Orville. It's episode 9, Cupid's Dagger. This is an episode where, actually, uh, overall the episode is a rehash of basically everything since episode 1. The main plot line is um, that the Orville has to go. Uh, there's two warring factions, basically, wanting to settle the same planet, and they're both saying, oh, we were here first, you were here first. So they found this uh, artifact, and they're bringing in an archaeologist, and we've got uh, Admiral Halsey is back. And the archaeologist we find is, is Darulio, which we find out is uh, played by Rob Lowe, who was the guy that was sleeping with Kelly in the first five minutes of the pilot. We're basically going back to, uh, we brought back an old Admiral. We brought back uh, ex-lover. We brought back the divorce jokes again. What else do we bring back? Oh, yes. Um, we also have a bit of a spat real quick between... Uh, Mortis and his partner. Uh, they were in the doctor's office. They get the baby checked out. Baby's now a boy. If you didn't see about girl, again, I'll post my post up here. Or it was posting to the right. And I'll put my uh, link about that there too. And so, and it's all about this whole episode is all about relationships. Race relationships between the warring factions, relationships between Ed and Kelly. Relationships again between uh, Dr. Finn and Yafit. He's still hitting on her. Oh, I totally forgot too. Uh, the teaser started off with, um, it was karaoke night. Go figure. Uh, there's still karaoke 400 years from now. I totally forget. I think it was a Journey song or whatever that Kelly was singing. And she was doing a pretty good song as a singer. And But that wasn't the point of the of the karaoke teaser. Uh, the, the point was actually Bordis was going to be the next guy coming up. And he said that uh, Gordon taught him how to sing a song. And I'm not sure the name of the song because I'm not into Céline Dion, Cabernet. Uh, but he was going to sing that song. And the, the music is building, and the music is building. And the mu I think it's the song from the Titanic. And the music is building and building. He's about to go, <gasps> and like Captain Mercer reports to the bridge. And like, darn, we're not going to hear Bordas sing. I thought either he was going to break out into some silly voice, and he's not going to be his manly Bordas voice, his Mocklin voice, or... Uh, it was going to be a really bad rendition of Silly and Dio. He gets his mission from Admiral Halsey to say, okay, you got to go to um, the planet of the week and stop the two factions from fighting, and you're going to meet the archaeologist. So we get to see that Star Rulio, and you don't get to see him until he actually lands on the ship. That was kind of weird, too, because uh, so all of the information is coming in, says Alara, and then Kelly says, okay, well, we're going to meet the sh who's coming off of the shuttle, and we'll get things sorted. And I don't know why she does because um, I was going to say it a few times, but you know everybody's got their little com badge on their on their uh, jackets. So why not hit the com badge and say, you know, Commander Grayson, it's Darulio. He's showing up on the ship. You know, your ex boyfriend. And it goes south from there. And the other thing I wanted to touch on real quick, as I'm watching the episode, this reminded me of an episode. I wasn't sure what it was, and there was an episode in, in TNG. I think it was season three called Sarek, where you get to see Sarek show up with uh, Picard and the gang. But that episode was, he was actually, again, he was negotiating a peace treaty, and Sarg was going through some problem where he couldn't control his feelings, and somehow he was able to, like, literally broadcast his lack of emotional control, and everybody was angry and mad. And there was a clip I saw the other day where uh, Crusher gives Wesley a hard time, slaps him in the face, and, and just because of Sarg, is basically his telepathy is just, you know, through the roof. So this is sort of the reverse of it. We find out what happens is that Darulio, when he's in heat, his pheromones go out of control, but instead of like being an airborne pheromone, it's actually a tactile pheromone. So if he goes up to somebody, oh, hi, how are you doing? Or pats them on the back, or is, is the skin to skin touch, you know, just like naked now, or naked now, or naked times, so or whoever Darulio touches, because he's getting all hot and horny, and everybody else said he touches the same thing. He touches Kelly. Uh, later on, you find that he accidentally touches... Uh, oh, I think he touches Kelly. Kelly touches Ed. And then Darulio bumps into Yafit in the corridor by, of course, walking into him like everybody else does. And one of the pieces of uh, Yafit falls on the floor. He's, so he actually puts it physically back on. Again, he's transmitting the pheromones to Yafit. Yafit was holding flowers that he gave to Claire. Claire touched the flowers and then... Next thing you know, she shows up in a sexy outfit in Yafits. So basically, that's the whole episode. Um, anybody that's been in contact with Darulio 
is basically turning into a horny little teenager. So so Ed's hitting on Dorfulio. Uh Kelly again sleeps with Dorfulio, so we're re-binging back the exact same scene we saw before. Jokes and whatever too are are sorta of coming back again, causing problems and it's causing problems because like now Ed is pining for him and he's swooning over Dorfulio. So is Kelly. The, the delegates from the warring factions, where's the captain? Where's the first officer? We've got to sort this thing out. Where's the archaeologist? We want to find out the artifact is whose DNA is it or if you can carbonate the thing. Again, it comes to conclusion. They figure out like how to stop the uh, the horny form pheromones from affecting everybody. Alara is actually the one that figures out what the heck's going on, gets everybody to their quarters, locks up, tries to lock it down as best as they can. The two factions have had enough of what's going on. They actually call their fleets in, and they're about to have this big battle. And actually, while they're having the battle, and you're looking out the window, and then Darfulio's going like, Seth, what's going on? You know, there's a big fight going on. Sorry, Seth, Ed. What's going on? There's a big fight going on. What's happening? Oh, don't worry about it. I just get over here. And then he figures out, no, 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 he has to fix this. So what they end up doing is they... Uh, they don't show how, but actually, I guess somehow he makes contact with the two warring faction ambassadors, touches them, and of course, somehow they touch each other to shake hands, and then the pheromone works with the two faction. Then at the punchline of the episode, they show up on the bridge holding hands, and they're telling their fleets, okay, no, we've resolved the issue, and have a nice day, and you know, tell their fleets to go back home. And the second punchline is, is that Darfulio finds out that the artifact and the DNA on it is actually that these two factions uh, both have a common ancestry. And I think that has been done with, I think, the cloud minders. You know, the guys were in the clouds, you got the mine and the miners. And a lot of people maybe don't want to hear this, but I have a personal theory that if you go far enough back, we as a people are all related. Like, even if you go back to, like, ancient European history, um, you know, this faction was here, that faction was there, you know, the Germanic tribes went this way, the Romans went that way, the Mongols went this way, the Ottomans went that way, and everybody's just going through Europe. And, of course, you know, you got these, you know, all these guys pillaging and doing everything else or just settling in certain regions and, you know, making out with the locals. Well, DNA is going to get passed around and passed around my ancestry, too, is a combination of German, Austrian, uh, Czechoslovakian, and we can go back 200 years all the way back to a certain parts of Germany. I think my grandfather's side can go back to Ilsas Lorraine, which is a part of France, and you go even further back, you know, that kind of thing. So only a slight nitpick is, again, everybody's in each, everybody's face again. It's like, meh, 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 meh. Um, I know people don't get along and stuff like that either, but I figured this is a professional bunch of people in space. They're quasi-military. Overall, not again, not my favorite episode. Again, too, we're leaning again on a TNG episode and a few other episodes about you know people not getting along and the whole, like I said, instead of Sarek making everybody angry, uh, Darfulio is making everybody horny. But again, put it to you guys. What did you guys think? Did you like it, dislike it? But anyway, on that note, we're going to shut her down. I'm going to have to get some sleep soon. And off to doing Remembrance Day tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully it'll either be posted. I don't know if my internet holds up, which is not. It's blinking off and on right now. So this may be a little bit late. But if you do show up. Oh, yeah. Also, too, Dave, if you're still new here again, don't forget. Hit subscribe. Like, dislike. Ring the little bell. And see you in the next one.